Good evening, everyone. Sister Thompson, good to see you there. All right, Elaine, good to see you. Your crew. All right, oh, everybody tuning in. Linda, good to see you. Rita. All right, excellent, excellent. Darlene, good to see you. Good evening, good evening. Trina. Lori, how you doing? Good to see you, Darlene and Gladys. Sister Diane, Sister Patricia. All right, I see you guys coming on, Andrea. Good evening to everybody. Yvette, good to see you. All right. Sister Sylvia, Harrietta, or Harriet, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's going to be uh, another Friday night. We've made it back around again already. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Quite an interesting, interesting week it has been. And uh, we are going to tune in to our chat tonight. Uh, scripture references around Romans 12, 10. Um, yeah, Romans 12, 10, that's what we'll look at tonight. Yeah. So if you have your Bibles with you, that'll be our point of reference. I believe we might move around a little bit more, but we'll see. But that's where we'll get going from tonight. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. All right. I hope everybody's been having a good week. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. All right, we're going to pray in just a moment here. Again, Romans chapter 12, verse 10 is where we're going to dig in uh, just as a point of reference tonight. I'm going to talk about a lot, a lot going on this week. Of course, there's a lot going on every week. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll see. I have a couple of ideas and things and directions I want to go. We'll see where we end up. But um, yeah, I pray. We'll be praying for direction. <laughs> Amen on tonight. As we just sit around and kind of chat. Maybe we'll bounce around. Maybe we just bounce around to a couple things. We'll see. All right. All right. All right. So Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 10 is our point of reference tonight. It says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Mm. So be kindly affectionate to one another uh, with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, but rather fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. All right. That's where we're going to kind of plan our reference tonight. So that was uh, Romans 12 verses 10 and 11. So that's where we're going to kind of dig in tonight. So let's let's pray. Father, we are uh, grateful for another day that you've allowed us to see. Thank you for the week that you brought us through. <clears throat> for many, it's been challenging. It's been uh, daunting. It's been uh, just tough. And we are just in need of kicking our feet up and relaxing tonight just to have a little time aside to chit-chat about some things. And so we invite your presence, Lord, in the midst of our time. We need your wisdom and your guidance, your sense of direction. We pray that you will guide our discussions tonight, uh, that it would also be refreshing and restoring uh, as well to each of us, that we might uh, be the wiser for having hung out. Spirit of the Lord, we pray for those not only that are watching now, but those that will watch and tune in later. We pray your blessing favor upon them as well. 
We just commit all things to you, Lord, and just uh, look forward to what you will do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. So tonight, 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 Romans chapter 10 is uh, where I kind of had as a point of reference. And uh, yeah, had a few things on my mind. Let me massage my way through that. So um, from one of the things I, I you know, many of you are aware, um, oftentimes, uh, well, through the various months, they have months that are designated for different things to bring attention to. <clears throat> and one of the things for the month of October uh, that is um, highlighted through the month is domestic violence awareness. And so it's the Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so I kind of sort of wanted to talk about that a little bit, but I kind of sort of wanted to talk about um, a little bit of just, yes, a few other things kind of mixed in. And so I'm trying to, you know, figure out how to blend it all together so that we can, you know, have some benefit from it all. But I think the passage really helps a lot uh, in terms of just encouraging us um, how to treat each other. So I just kind of want to, you know, take a look at the, the domestic violence a little bit and also just maybe in the scope of domestic violence, just just talk a little bit about, you know, just treating each other right. OK, so bear with me. Uh, we'll get there some kind of way. <laughs> we'll see as the Lord may lead um, and get us there properly. <clears throat> Let me say first and foremost, um, give you a little bit of definition, too, because you know, domestic violence is kind of a word is thrown out there and everybody's not exactly sure what it is and how it works and who, you know, we've got all these presuppositions and pre thoughts about what it is and all that kind of thing. And yeah, it's not always what you think. So uh, just to give you kind of a textbook def definition for it, um, domestic violence is described or defined as a pattern of abusive behavior. It's a pattern of abusive behavior in any relationship that is um, used by one partner to gain or maintain control over the other. OK, so it's a pattern of abusive behavior in the relationship to gain and maintain control over the other. Now, that domestic violence takes on a whole plethora of venues. And oftentimes we hear domestic violence. We oftentimes only think of the physical side of it. But there are more than just physical sides of domestic violence. So I wanted to kind of start with that. And also, if in the event you've um, in the process of our discussion or in the interim that you're kind of concerned or thinking about it um you know may some maybe you know someone that may need some help things like that there is a number i'm just going to throw out to you it's a, a one a 24-hour um domestic violence hotline number uh and that's 1-800-799-7233 that's a 24-hour domestic um violence hotline number uh we also within the county i meant to get this number as well but Perhaps someone can look that up uh, within Prince George's County and probably in the, the varying counties and municipalities that you live in. There are probably uh, different numbers and different reference points uh, for, you know, reporting domestic violence. OK, and so just want to kind of put all that out front in terms of domestic violence. But I, I, I don't want to dwell holistically on that um, because I, I kind of want to. Let me hit it a little bit, but I also want to kind of stretch it because I think even in the whole concept of domestic violence, it has a lot to do with the fact of how are we treating each other uh, just in general and, you know, just kind of understanding that dynamic. So we talked about it already saying, you know, it's between partners or whatever, you know, using abusive behavior to control the other. And I did say that there's a lot of different types, you know, obviously physical, you know, when, when there's physical, some kind of physical violence, hitting, striking, biting, um, pushing, you know, burning, uh, doing something that, you know, actually does physical harm to a person. Um, and then, you know, there's also the, the sexual uh, side of, of the abuse that could be, you know, rape or uh, molestation or incest or uh, even what we would call marital rape, uh, forcements of, um, you know, uh, sexual uh, encounters, experiences, 
uh, unwanted. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, um, you know, that perspective. But then there's a, the actually emotional um, side of it. And I guess even as I was looking at all these different perspectives of it, um, what what kind of dawned on me is that all of these, and I'm, I'll list the other couple few in a minute, but all of these have um, impacts and oftentimes long lasting impacts on the individual and the families and, and, and you know, that type of thing. And so, so there's a lot of ways in which we can violate each other in just basic one-on-one uh, -on -one relationships uh, in terms of um, what is defined as domestic violence. Um, you know, again, emotionally, you can hurt someone, you know, by you know, the name calling all the time, the, the degradation of the uh, person's um, uh, self-esteem, you, know, you know, degrading them and things like that. Um, you know, kind of making them feel like they don't have any worth. Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so these are, are, are ways in which, um, you know, the, the domestic kind of violence kind of manifests itself. I'll also emotional, um, beyond emotional, there's economic or financial uh, violence that takes place where one person is controlling all the whole, controlling the other person through the financial means or through the, the um, finances uh, within the relationship and um, abusing them or controlling them through that venue as well. Uh, obviously, the psychological um, abuse, um, you know, involving, you know, fear, intimidation, you're getting in messing with the person's head, that's with the thought process. Um, you know, there could be threats, there could be stalking, there could be even what they call now cyber stalking. So any and all these things can be part of that um you know, domestic violence definition, okay? But now here, here's my thought process. Um, in terms of relationships, most people, when they come into a relationship uh, with other people, whether it's intimate, in you know, terms boyfriend, girlfriend, or whether it's just friends, there, there are some things that we kind of um, take for uh, granted or perhaps we assume when we enter into these uh, casual or, or even intimate relations with people, and even in the kingdom of God, and I'll say church, life, relationships, there's something that we kind of expect, okay, from one another, okay? Now, depending on whether that relationship is uh, Christian or whether it's in church uh, or whether it's, you know, intimate, or whatever, um, more on an intimate level, there are still certain things we kind of expect of the person, okay? And let me kind of draw this off a little bit from the, the sheer domestic violence part of it. Because I, you know, in Christianity, I think there are things that we kind of expect from each other as Christians, okay? Now, let me say this too. Um, the fact that we expect it does not mean that we're entitled to it, okay? So you may expect every Christian to be extraordinarily nice to you, to smile at you, to hug you every time you, they see you, to be your best buddy and best friend, and, you know, to be able to help you pay your bills whenever you can't pay them or whatever. You may have all kinds of expectations of your Christian friends or people in church, but just because you have that as an expectation doesn't mean that you should even get all those things you expect. So we have them. We have all these kinds of different expectations of people. Um, but doesn't mean that there's a necessity to obtain them. Now, some of you probably know and aware of and probably have gone through experiences where certain people had expectations of you. That you had no intention. First of all, you had no knowledge that they even had the expectation of you as a Christian or as a church member. And then secondly, you had not, you didn't have, not only not, didn't have the knowledge of it, you had no intention of even doing it. So it wasn't even on your radar. And then sometimes those things lead to, you know, 
people get mad at you and you're talking about you behind your back because you didn't do what they expected you to do because they thought, oh, well, you my Christian, you my sister, you my brother in Christ, you should do this or I thought you would do that. And so we kind of put some unrealistic expectation on them. So you got some of that that happens. Some of it's our own, you know, we build up our own thing, but some of it is just naturally, okay? Naturally, there are some basic things that we think or we probably are safe to say that we should have as expectations of people in the body of Christ or in church, okay, uh, as church members. Now, um, I, I want to throw this in as a caveat also because remember that church members are not perfect people, but church members are saints, who have been saved by the grace of God and <clears throat> in many cases are still struggling with stuff, okay? So just need to throw that out there because even though there are some basic things I think we should be able to expect from Christians, uh, some of them are still struggling in some of these very basic areas that, you know, you, you would think they would have down pat, okay? So, and throwing all that, I'm, I'm not throwing a whole lot in the mix. I'm just mixing a whole bunch of stuff up. But what I'm really trying to get at is in relationships, there are expectations, okay? Some good, some bad, some reasonable, some unreasonable, some biblically based and founded, some have no biblical base, or some are, I'm going to call some of them, uh, you know, almost fairy tale ish some people have like just fairy tale uh expectations of other people it's like wh where why would you think that they would do that um so but i think as a basics basic thing um even our our scripture reference tonight kind of helps us along in this that we we ought to be able to as romans 12:10 was our verse for tonight um be kind to each other Okay, just just that just just let's start with the be kind part. We ought to at least be able to be kind uh, to each other. Just simple, kind. Just be kind to people. That that does that's really not hard. Okay, just to be kind. Uh, and actually, the, the scripture just talks about being kindly affectionate. To be you know uh, <laughs> at least warm. You know, friend, somewhat friendly, maybe. Okay, just to be kind to people. I think as a as a basic thing uh, of being saved, you should maybe just salvation alone should have helped you be kind to people. Um, and so as a basic thing, we ought to be able to be just kind to each other, okay, uh, is as Christians and as people that we come in contact with. And in church life, okay, uh, wow, I, there's just such a, such a chasm and, and a range of where people are in church life. Because remember, some people have been at this for a long time. Some people just got started. Some people some people paid attention in, in Sunday school and some didn't. Some learned from vacation Bible school. Others didn't. They just went. Uh, so you got all kinds of folks in there. You got people who are there for one reason, people who are there for another. Some people are really serious about trying to live for Christ and others are just trying to look like they are. Okay. So you got a, you got a, in the church, you got a whole bunch of people. You got a hodgepodge of different people with different motives and reasons and everything. And so some, sometimes it's, uh, it, it's, uh, misleading and sometimes it's disappointing when we discover that the people that we thought should have been at least basically kind, just absolutely were not. Um, and that's that's kind of sad. Uh, on the other hand, also people who we thought just, you know, were reasonably mature. Like we thought you were, you know, further along in your Christian walk. To be able to treat people um, differently, kindly, but you're not. You're still acting like a baby, and when your feelings get hurt, you, you know, you cussing and fussing people out and running away and taking your ball. You know, like when you was on the playground and you got mad and you brought the ball, and you er, er, you didn't you didn't like the way everybody played, and you took your ball home and 
I'm going home. This is my ball. And you took your ball and you went home? Some of y'all still doing that kind of stuff. Some people still doing that. I mean, like they taking their ball and going home. I'm quit. Okay. Um, just, you know, not being kind. And, you know, sometimes I think, you know, people are, they need some kindness. They need you to be kind. Um, they need to be patient. Be, be affectionate. Be patient with people sometimes. Because um, everybody doesn't always get it right. I mean, even at the highest level, everybody doesn't always get it right. Even me, I don't always get it right. I mess up sometimes. We all do. Um, but at least, I think the least we could do is just be kind to each other. That, that to me, just kind of be kind. And in our relationships, um, or just being kind, I think it helps to ultimately to mirror what Jesus um, um, instructed us and has a plan for us. Uh, is has these left us as ambassadors of the kingdom of God, um, and that they will know. Um, that you are of the kingdom in an essence um, and that you are his disciples by the love you have for each other, okay? But if we can't even love each other in the kingdom of God, man, we're not even fulfilling the basic um, expectation that God has of us when he left us here and said to his disciples that, how else are they going to know you are my disciple? It's not going to be the, by the big old cross you're wearing around your neck. It's not because you're quoting, you know, three scriptures. It's not because you go to church all the time. He didn't say any of those things. None of those were qualifications for people knowing that you were his disciples. None of that. All of it had to do with how you love each other. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? Um, by the love you have for each other. And... On a basics, you know, humanly speaking, kindness, um, just being kind. And yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt you to be kind. It ain't, you ain't lose nothing. It's, you don't get broke by being kind, being friendly. Uh, in fact, you might, scripture says, if, if you, because some people say, I don't have no friends. Well, if you want some friends, you got to be friendly. You know, you got to find yourself friendly to have some friends. So a lot of our behavior, you know, we got to kind of check our own self. Our own behavior kind of you know, can either attract or repel people because of how we are. Um, and so, you know, kind, just being kind is what I'm trying to say first. Just, you know, just kind of be kind to each other. And, I'm, you know, even, even beyond the body of Christ, okay, we got the body of Christ or the church. We're going to be kind to each other. And then outside of that, we can be kind to people. Um, and even guess what? It's, it's not just Christians that have a bad day. Unsaved people have bad days too. So, to, you know, the person that's slow, ringing you up in line, they could be having a bad day or it could be just learning. It could be their first day on a job. And just because you're in a hurry doesn't mean you can't be kind to them and be patient and, you know, wait, um, you know, because guess what? You had a time when you, you you were learning too. Somebody had to wait for you, had to be patient for you and whatever you were doing. So yeah, I just think, you know, on a on a basic level, we we can do better, or I think we need to even focus on doing better at just the way we treat each other. Um and on the fr front of it is just being kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Okay? Um, loving each other as with a brotherly or the Greek word phileo uh, love, which is, you know, brotherly, like the same word is used uh, the, in the origins of the word Philadelphia, the city of brother. Um, so brotherly love, phil, phileo love. We can you know, begin with that, okay? Just start with loving each other as your brother. And can I say this honestly? Just if we could just do that part, it, it would change um, a lot of people's attitude about the kingdom and about kingdom people, and and they would automatically 
recognize you must be of the kingdom of God because you are so kind, because you are, are demonstrating brotherly love. Because again, Jesus already said it. I, they'll know you're my disciples by the love you have for one another. And of course, if they become recipients of that love or that affection or that kindness, guess what? They may have an opportunity. If they're not saved, they may have a desire to want to be saved because then they'll realize, hey, this is something I can get on a regular basis from my other brothers or sisters in Christ. So I, I, just, I think we can kind of start there and just thinking, how are we treating each other? How are we interacting with one another? Um, now, some of you are on this call tonight and you probably have some folk that you have written off. They are off. You have taken them out of the wheel. You have written them off. You deleted their phone number. You blocked them. You don't want to see them. You talking bad about them and all that stuff. Okay? I just want to encourage you. Try to be kind. Be kind. It's not going to cost you. It won't hurt you to be kind. Uh, yeah, maybe they did you wrong and all that stuff, but you did God wrong too, so be kind. Just be kind. Um, you know, I always, you know you, you've know, heard us saying, kill them with kindness. Just be kind to them. Love them. Love on them. With that phileo or brotherly um, type love, which is helpful. Um, and... You know, honor each other, as it talks about in that passage, uh, giving honor to each other. Um, here, here's another piece of how to, uh, how do I say, just affectionately care for each other. Because I think if we can build on this, I'm trying to do this thing simply. The domestic violence was the big picture. That's, that's the damage that's down the road. Okay, you don't get to domestic violence if you can deal with this little simple stuff first. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. So if, if we can deal with how, just let's just treat each other right. Just be kind to each other. I'm not even talking about somebody you, you dating or somebody you married to. I'm talking about just everybody. Just can you just start with just being kind. And if you can start with just being kind and, you know, uh, kindly affectionate as the scripture says, and, you know, loving them, uh, loving each other with a brotherly love. That right there takes us a long way because I'm never beating you upside the head or you're never throwing frying pans at me or your husband or your wife. You're never dragging them down the steps or, you know, <laughs> or talking bad about them, or calling them names or talk about their mama and their daddy or where they came from. None of that's happening in in a marriage or in a dating relationship or or in a domestic scenario if you have learned this basic stuff first, okay? Just be kind. So the moment, you know, you are prepared to punch your spouse, to slap your friend, to cuss your coworker, let's go back to basics. Just be kind. Is that a kind thing that to do? And obviously, I know you think that you're justified by your actions because you're angry. But anger has nothing to do with being kind. You can be kind. You can be angry and still be kind. Um, I think it's a kind of a trick of the devil to, to make you think it's because you feel a certain emotion, you still can't act in a positive way. You can feel a negative emotion and still act in a positive way. OK, you, you can be angry and sin not. That's what scripture tells us to do. Um, you can be mad and still love. You can do that. It's possible. It really is possible. But I think it really comes back to, hey, let's get down. Let's get some basic things in place first. Before we get into the deep and the heavy, let's get some. Can we just be kind? Let's just be kind. OK, let's start with that. Be, be you know, kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Can we just deal with the brotherly love? Before we get to the sexual, intimate, I want to marry you, love. Before you can even get to all that, the heavy level domestic stuff, simple. Can we just learn just simple, person to person, human to human, brotherly love, and especially in the kingdom of God. All right. So I'm, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to build us. I'm trying to get us up, come up, 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 up. And then he says in honor 
this is the text says, in honor, you want to give preference to one another. All right? Now, um, <laughs> again, how do we, how are we treating each other? Am I giving, first of all, am I being kind? Am I showing brotherly love? Am I lifting them up, the people around me, by giving preference to them? Who is the preferred person in your life? All right. Who is it always you? Are you always the preferred person? Are you always the one that got to have your way? That's just a question. Only you can answer that. Um, but, it, but it may speak to this answer of the question, whether or not you have or whether or not you are preferring other people above yourself. And guess what? I think part of dealing with each other properly has as a fundamental necessity putting other people first. And where do you learn that from? We learn from Jesus. Uh, because what Jesus did in offering his life for us as a ransom for our sin was the example of putting others before yourself. You know, here he is on the cross. He's being uh, crucified. He's bleeding. He's been beaten. All that, going through all the suffering. And, and the malefactor uh, on the cross says to him, you know, if you be the Christ, come on down, save yourself and save us or save me too. And so guess what? If he was only thinking about himself, he would have said, you know what? You got a good idea. I'm coming off this cross. I'm out. Peace. See y'all later. Y'all deal with your own sin. He didn't. He put others first. Um, he who was without sin became sin for us. And so he, he is the example for us um, that is in, you know, trying to put other people first. Give, give somebody else an opportunity to be lifted up. You know, you don't have to be the one all the time <laughs> this first. You don't have to be the one all the time getting all the preference. Can anybody, can anybody get preference before you? Anybody? Um, and they should. I mean, you know, just basic. Now, this whole preference thing can go to something as simple as, simple as, listen, you're in line, you're in the grocery store, right? And you, you're doing your grocery shopping. You got a cart running over, okay? You got a you're running over cart with, you know, bagels and potato chips and apples and steak and meat and all the stuff you got. Your car is running over, okay? And you know good and well you have more than 20 items, all right? But you're in the 20 item or less line. <laughs> Lord help us. And you you figure, oh, ain't nobody over here so I can go through here. Ain't nobody going to count my items so I'm going to squeak on through the 20 item line with 45 items. <laughs> All right. And then somebody comes along and they have two items. OK, two. Now, since you wrong in the first place, OK, you ain't got no business over there in the line. Can you at least put somebody else first and let them go have preference? Let somebody else have preference. Say, you know what? I have 45 items in a 20 item line. You ain't got but two. Why don't you go before me? <laughs> OK, I know you say it. Hey, but Pastor, I, I ain't in that line. I don't do that. I was in a regular line and they got two. They should go to the short line. Well, okay, maybe they should. But if you, what if you notice that they only got a couple of items and you know yours is going to take a long time because you're in a regular line and it's taking a long time. Can, why, why can't you just have, let somebody else be preferred, you know, other than you? And so it's, see, it's simple, simple stuff. How we treat each other, it has to do with, how we treat each other. That's really what I'm talking about tonight. It's not really domestic violence. It was like the get us in this, but really the real thing I'm really trying to talk about is how we treat each other. Because I think, I think we in the kingdom of God need help. Okay. Since, since this, my guess is the majority of people probably on the chat, probably all, if not everybody, you're probably born again. You're probably saved. So I'm probably talking to, uh, if not 99% of you are probably born again and probably say, so, so I'm talking to Christian people. We have some work to do. Hello, Jesus. As it relates to how we treat each other. 
Okay? Now, let me go back to my domestic violence thing where I started from. Y'all was wondering, where is he going with all this? I don't want to talk about domestic violence. Where is he going with all this? Well, guess what? Even in domestic violence, there is no, watch this, there is no difference in the statistical data of domestic violence between Christian and non-Christian people. Did you know that? Which tells me something. That tells me that we are not even getting it right, the basic part ourselves. So that's why it says we got to just talk about how we treat each other, how we treat each other, okay? How, how we you know, taking care of each other, just even as Christians and just as human beings. Are we being kind to each other? Are we being affectionate to each other? Are we putting other, uh, can we esteem anybody greater than ourselves? And here's the thing, um, and maybe some of you have learned this, and I've learned this to be extraordinarily true. You know, there's, there's really greater joy in lifting someone else up than lifting yourself up. It takes a lot of work to lift yourself up, you know, because <laughs> here's the problem with lifting yourself up, okay? Um, I'm sorry, I get, I'm getting going off on tangents, but it, this is it's coming to me. Here's the problem with lifting yourself up. When you lift yourself up, you have to lift yourself up knowing all of your flaws, okay? So that means you have to get past some lies to lift yourself up. That's kind of sort of what I... Okay, that's not the whole of it. That's part of it. But when you lift somebody else up, you don't know all that, all that faults. You just, you're lifting them up based on what you've seen, based on what you've experienced with them, and you're lifting them up. And, 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 it's, and it's, it's more rewarding, really, literally, it's more rewarding to lift someone else up and to help someone else's journey. Because sometimes a little thing that you may do in lifting someone else up or putting someone else first may make the difference in how they live out that day or how they adjust their entire life. You'd be surprised how many people have been so vastly affected in life by things in their past where no one has lifted them up. Or let me take the domestic violence person. Maybe they grew up in a home of domestic violence and maybe they grew up in a scenario where they were abused or misused or mistreated and they've never been appreciated and they've never been put first and they've, ne they've never been lifted up. And you come along because you, you know, are a child of God and you're exercising just the basic principles of treating people right. And you, you, you lift them up. You encourage them. And they're like, wow, like nobody ever did that. Hey, if we could just treat each other right, it would happen more regularly than it wouldn't be like, this is unusual. It would be more regular. And, and as many Christians as we have in the world, I would think you, we would have more and more of those experiences, but they're probably more rare than anything else. And so, yeah, the way we treat each other just on the basics are, is, is, is in need of help, okay? We, we need to get better at this. We need to learn how to be kind in the first place. We need to learn how to um, esteem others, put others first, lift, the, lift others up. Um, just, you know, honoring other people, you know, other than ourselves. And I think in the interim, what you'll find is there is, again, great joy that comes from it. And the world around you will get to know and see that you are the disciples of the Lord because the way you treat each other, the way you love one another. And they'll feel it in the way that you love them. Even if they're not believers, they'll feel the love in the way that you treat them. Does it make sense? So, um, I think... <laughs> If I can, I, I don't, I hate to say it like this, but I think overarchingly as, as the kingdom of God, we're not really doing that great here and treating each other right. Okay. That's just my, it's my slant on things is that I think we are negligent in um, just treating each other right and lifting each other up and um, encouraging each other. Um, as we should, okay, as we, and let me say this, not only as we should, but even as we could, um, as we could, and I think it, for, 
it, it's kind of amazing. I'm going to say this from, from my perspective. I know being a pastor is different. But from from my perspective, because I think sometimes when someone says something to be kind to you, because it's not as normal, it feels odd. It's like, wow. It's like, wow, that was, that was different. Um, and if someone, you know, is honoring you and you kind of feel like, well, what did I really do? And yet, but they're still esteeming you and they're putting you first. It feels odd. It feels unusual. In some cases, even uncomfortable because you're like, well, what, what, what happened? So this passage in Romans 12, which we read, Romans 12, 10 and 11, it does help us in this whole idea of you know, how, how are we treating each other and, and helping us to get better at that, but even better than that, to, to break a cycle of domestic violence begins with the basic principles of how to treat people, okay? Because that person who grows to become the, um, the perpetrator of you know domestic violence um, has not learned the fundamentals of how to treat people. Now I know from a psychological perspective or from a perspective of a sociologist, they would perhaps attach that to uh, you know what was written on the slate of their heart. So in other words, what was their experience, and because of, because of their experience, they are now. Uh, you know, reliving out that experience through, uh, you know, become, you know, abusing someone else because they were abused and they were mistreated. Now they are abusing someone else. And, you know, maybe some of that's true, maybe it's not. But I think on a basic, uh, obviously, if a person has been in a scenario where they're being abused, they haven't learned how to treat people. If they grew up in a home where they watched or witnessed their parents abusing one another, that's what they were learning. They weren't learning how to properly treat people. They weren't learning how to be kind to each other. And sometimes in certain communities, being kind or it represented being vulnerable. And so they didn't want to be kind because it said you're, it, it put them in a position of vulnerability or there was this, sub, this idea or perception of an idea that to be kind meant that you're weak. Being kind does not make you weak. You can be extraordinarily strong. Matter of fact, it, 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 I think it's, it takes a lot more strength to be, to be kind when you could, you could withhold it, okay? I could withhold kindness, but I'm strong enough to, to release it to you anyway. Yup, does it make sense what I'm saying? Um, hopefully I'm not confusing you too much. But I'm really just talking about how we treating each other based on the basics. Um, being kind, affectionate, um, honoring each other. And there's lots of ways in which we can honor each other. Lots of which ways we can uh, encourage each other, bless each other, uh, esteem each other, lift each other up. Even people you don't know, you can still do it. Um, you know, respectfully, you know, you know, I think sometimes, you, you, you know, I have to be a little bit careful sometimes. And I think sometimes you have to preface your encouragements or your exaltations of people with the pref with the preference. Um, you know, let them know I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to hit on you. I'm not trying to flirt. But, hey, I, I think, hey, this is what you just did was good or what I see in you is good or whatever it is. And you lift them up um, and you encourage them. Uh, and and how, how great would that be if, you know, on a regular basis, uh, first of all, an unbeliever on a regular basis ran into a Christian and a Christian encouraged them or put them first or lifted them up or was kind to them. Niggas get hit with the, so and also they, they just get hit with the kindness and the, uh, the proper uh, treatment of Jesus through you and through me. So they getting loved all the way around. And then um, let's take it to another level. The, no, the next level is that between us in the body of Christ, um, between us as believers, we're being kind to each other. We're lifting each other. We're encouraging each other. And then guess what? Then together we are stronger because we all are, are being fueled with the things that we have 
um, need of in terms of affirmations and encouragements and strength and support and all that. And then together as a body of believers, we become stronger and more secure in who we are. Um, we're not, you know, like wondering and guessing and, and, and trying to outdo each other. No, instead of trying to outdo each other, we're really helping each other, bind, binding, binding together to help each other because we're treating each other right. Yeah, I think that, I think if we can get that, just the basics of how to treat each other. We could change a lot um, of patterns that flow out of the foundation of not being able or not knowing or not practicing treating people right. Um, manifests itself. We, we, can, we, can, we can avoid some of that future manifestation of some of the horrific things we, we hear about in the news like you know, parents killing their kids and boyfriends coming in and beating up the girlfriend or beating up the wife or, you know, hurting the children. Just all kind of, we could, all this domestic violence stuff could be thwarted if we would get the basic principle. Let's treat each other right. Can we learn how to treat each other right? Um, yeah, learn how to love with brotherly love. Learn how to understand that the person uh, beside you has value just like you have value. In fact, for some, you've got to hear this, that you have value. And you got to know you've got value. And your value is not vested in perhaps what people think of you, but is vested in what God has said about you. So even if you don't think, oh, no, I'm not valuable. Yes, you are. Jesus said you are. He not only said you are, he demonstrated that you are. What do you mean by that, Pastor? He died for you. That was a demonstration of how valuable you were. He came from heaven to earth because you were valuable. He didn't come down from the cross because you were valuable to him. And he got up on, on the third day because you were valuable to him. He didn't even sin because you were so valuable to him. You got value. You got a lot of value. And how powerful would that be if we could begin to stir that up in each other? Stir that up in each other. And we could, we could start, um, stop having so many Christians walking around with low self-esteem. Or if I, if I say it the way I, I like to say it, in reality, we shouldn't be holding on to self-esteem. We should be getting a God esteem. So instead of you having a self-esteem, what you think about yourself, your esteem will be versed on what God has said about you. So we need a God esteem and not a self esteem because self will break you down. But God has lifted you up. And in the process of us learning how to treat each other right, we can lift each other up. We can we can help each other up. We can strengthen each other. We can strengthen the body uh, of believers together by lifting each other up. Yeah, I think that's good stuff. Um you know, prefacing one another. I like this part too, uh, in verse 11. It says not lagging in diligence. You know, that means just kind of dragging your feet about, you know, treating somebody right. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, some people, you, 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 well, you meet them, but you haven't really quite figured them out yet. You don't really know if you want to go all in with them, like you really want to be, and so you kind of like hold off to be too, too kind to them or too friendly. And you just kind of want to watch them for a while. Um, well, what is Texas really saying? If we you know, let's just be kind, be kind to each other, be, you know, brotherly love to each other. Um, but don't don't drag your feet about it. You know, don't be lagging in it. Don't but do, be doing it diligently, because guess what? In your doing so, you're doing it for the purpose of God. Yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. So don't be lagging, uh, but rather be fervent in it because the process of what you're doing, just watch this. this is, listen, just the simplicity of treating each other right is a God thing. This is what God wants us to do. And it's our service to God. It's our service to God to treat each other right. Did you realize that? For me to treat you right and to treat you fair and to treat you as a... As a um, 
dignified human being, um, for me to lift you up, to put you first, that's, that's God's assignment. Of, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to make sure I treat you right. You're supposed to be making sure you treat me right and you're treating others right. That's our responsibility. It really, really, it really, really is. And, and guess what? It's not limited to your you know, core circle of four or five friends. It goes beyond that. It's humanity. Um, because they, if I go, keep going back to this, if, if, if they are to know that we are the children of God, they will see it through our actions for one another. All right, now, so let's just say we, we kind of got this right. We're getting this right now, okay? So we're getting it right, learn how to treat each other right. We're taking care of each other, okay? Now when you start having marriages, okay, and you start having people coming together and start dating each other, okay? But guess what? They already got the whole treat each other right part. All right. So now if I if we can if they solidify that part and we they've learned, OK, we I know how to treat people right. I know I, I, know, I already got that. That's the basis. Now, when they get into the relationships, now, when they you know start dating, they get married or they have children or they have to take care of mom or dad or auntie or somebody like that. And but they already know. I already know how to. It's my responsibility to treat people right. It's my responsibility to be kind to them. It's my responsibility to be affectionate to them. It's my responsibility to lift them up. I, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. But they've learned that from the ground up. Then there won't be any of this, you know, drowning your kids in the bathtub or running over your husband or wife or stabbing people or shooting people. And not, not, we could, the, the whole domestic violence thing goes away. If we learn from the foundation how to treat each other right before you even get into love. Now, I'm gonna just, let me say this. Um, love is 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 what it love takes things to a whole nother level. The, the one I'm talking about erotica, uh, eros, love, uh, intimate love takes things to another level because now your emotions start getting involved. Now it's you hurt me, my heart, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so that pushes people to another uh, vulnerability of violence or action because um, my emotion is in, in it. And once my emotion is in it, I'm, I'm likely to react or respond emotionally when someone pushes me a certain way, okay, by their actions. But if I've foundationally learned how to treat you, even when that comes, I... I how do I say my my foundational uh, mechanism of interaction with you or with that person is to treat them right. And that just it becomes automatic. And so now it becomes harder for me to abuse, misuse, mistreat, violate um, or control you through some other mechanism of abusive behavior if I have as a foundation and a fundamental uh, principle of life, treat people right. And I know how that, what that means. And I realize that in doing so, it is the means by which I serve God who saved me, who redeemed me, who blessed me, who was patient with me, who didn't get mad at me and wipe me out. And so I don't have to do that to other people. I can treat them right, treat people right. I treat people right. But yeah, like, hey, um, we, we, we struggling. We, we, we're struggling in this. Uh, it's sad to me that there is no difference I initially thought, as I even studied this whole idea of domestic violence and all that stuff, how people were, you know, abusing one another. Uh, I thought, you know, uh, well, you know, there's, there's got to be some statistical difference between believers and unbelievers. When I found out there was no difference, I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You mean to tell me Christians haven't even learned how to treat each other? Yeah, something wrong here. We, we, we're in the stats, too. Yeah, we're in the stats, and there's no... There's no differentiation. And that's another misnomer that a lot of times people think because domestic, domestic violence, that's only for unsaved people. No, it's for, it's for people. Because people haven't learned how to treat each other. Um, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't um, 
We haven't mastered that yet. And I think this is an area we can grow in, we can get better at. And it begins with you, one step at a time. It begins with me, one step at a time. Um, you know, understanding that we do have a responsibility. And uh, that responsibility, if executed properly, can, watch this, it can make a, a, an impact in and upon generations to come. Because I, you know, think about this. For those of you that perhaps think back, you know, about domestic, you know, you think, oh, how your my mom treated me or my granddad or my mom, somebody, boom, boom, boom. Well, those generations are being impacted by the behavior. Well, the, in the same way it, it is and ca and can be impacted by the behavior of the past through generations, the negative behavior, it also can be impacted very positively uh, for the generations of the future. If we do our part, if we learn how to treat each other right, if we get the basic fundamentals down pat, guess what? We can begin to move forward and start seeing there be an eradication and, and a minimization of some of the domestic violence in our community and in the world in which we live. It all starts with really understanding that we do We've got the power to do it because the Spirit of God is in us. We've got the commandment to do it because Jesus gave it to us. Now we just have to do it. we got to begin executing it, treating each other right. Now, I don't want to give you no hard, hard, hard assignment, but I will give you a basic assignment. Between now and, say, I don't know, next week, how about we work on that? How about we work on being kind to everyone? People around us, uh, even people who've made you mad, even people who've done you wrong, be kind to them anyway. Um, why let their action impact your disposition? Hey, just allow your disposition to be, this is going to be my disposition. I'm not going to let you impact that. I, I just want to be kind to people. I'm going to be kind to people. And even when you're not nice to me, I'm still going to be kind to you. Then hey, let that be your disposition. And allow the joy of God to flow through you in, in that regard. Um, is We got to start somewhere. Mm, as we're chatting tonight, I think this is just a good place to start. Uh, because there's so many, how do I say? So many places and ways in which this goes wrong. So I say, let's go back to the root. And the root is, if we learn just how to treat each other right, we can deal with all the other part. Okay? Cool. So that's my chat for tonight. Ah, I'm done. Uh, we were talking from Romans 12. There was our basis. Romans 12, verses 10 and 11. Just again, talk. we, we kind of focused, looked in on um, domestic violence, but our real focus was how are we treating each other? And let's do better. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you because you love us. We thank you because you have been so kindly affectionate towards us. You've been patient with us. You've been loving. You've, been, you, you've put us before yourself. Thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. And now, Lord, even now, as my brothers and my sisters are tuning in and listening, I'm praying for them because many of them are going through trials and tribulations. Some of them have been impacted by domestic violence, by someone not treating them right, by someone uh, ongoingly abusing them in some way, whether it was physical or emotional or psychological or economical or physiological, wh whatever it was, guys, some of them are being impacted even to this very day because of what was uh, transpired against them. But I pray, God, today that through the power of your supernatural endowment that you would turn their life around and strengthen them, God, to be able to overcome that uh, previous life experience and, and abuse and to bring them to a place, God, where they can be kind to others, where they can be affectionate to others, where they can trust you enough, God, to realize you love them that much. And that they, if you get, gave them that kind of love, it's in them to give it to others. So Spirit of the Lord, I just pray for the various situations they may find themselves in. I pray that you will meet them at the point of their need, whether it's financial, emotional, spiritual. I pray that you would heal as only you can. Be with them, be with their families, watch over them and keep them. Bless each of them, God, in the way that brings glory only to you. And your name is exalted as a result. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing and what you're going to do 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. All right, well, guys, that's, uh, thank you all for hanging out with me again tonight. Always love you, really appreciate you. A couple of reminders. One is that we look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning, 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock, and this coming Wednesday, the 21st, just as a reminder, please, please, please make sure, for those of you who are members of Kettering Baptist Church, that you uh, you know sign up or re get registered to make sure you have the link to the upcoming business meeting, uh, quarterly business meeting. That is for members only. So if you do have it, don't you know pass it around to other folks and they will check you in anyway when you come in. But we want to make sure that you're there and we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, so that means no, no Wednesday night Bible study next week because we will be doing the, the business meeting at that same time. But if you have children or you're involved in Awana, Awana will go on. So you still have a chance uh, to continue to have your kids plugged in. And as they're growing in the wisdom and the knowledge of God, they can continue to do so. All right. I think that's all I have in the form of announcements. Make sure you got yourself and, and, you, and you're, you're doing your voting, early voting, all that stuff is coming up. Hopefully you got registered before it was too late. Uh, but yeah, get yourself out there, prepare to vote and study your candidates. Make sure you're an educated voter. All right. Thank you all for everything. Be blessed. Love you. Good night.